Hello, and we're back to the April Raw Show. Thank you all for tuning in with us on today. And I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself, starting with Bishop Lancaster. My name is Bishop Donald C. Lancaster, Senior. I am the Bishop of the Living My Faith Worship Center, located in Grange, Georgia. I'm Frederick Stanley. I'm the pastor of Zion West Baptist Church in Valley, Alabama. I was Robinson, pastor of my little Bishop of Baptist Church in Grange, Georgia. Now, I know y'all talk a little bit louder than that when y'all in that pulpit now. Y'all can come on down now, right? Huh? All right. Now, now we've been watching Preachers of L.A., and I know that you all have been watching it as well. And tell us, first of all, Bishop Lancaster, what is your take on the show overall? I think the show is actually an awesome show because it gives the public an opportunity to just understand some of the personal things as well as the public things that we as men of God and women of God in some cases go through. Mm -hmm. And your take, Reverend Stanley? As as well, I I agree with Bishop um, Lancaster. With the show, you get a chance to see that we have a personal life Okay. that's separate than the church. And there is a difference between um, the church, if you want to say persona as well, um, as at home, there has to be a difference. There has to be a disconnect um, to allow you to have balance mm-hmm. in order to be healthy. Thank you, Reverend Robinson. Uh, I continue with my two other brothers here because they're the job, and I like to show that. Mm-hmm. Uh, certainly, we're not going to be able to push our life uh, mm-hmm. and we have to separate from church as well as the Christian life. Is that hard to do? No, your personal no. life from the church? No, we just have people helping you in other church. That's not church life. They like to leave. Uh, they just stay with a doctor life. Some of you guys are not It's not hard to yeah. do. But don't you think that some people would hold, should we hold pastors to a higher standard? Here. Yes, we are here to a higher standard. But at the close of the day, but, uh, we. Uh, pastors are still human. Mm-hmm. We're still human. The Bible says that we are in the world, but not of the world. Of not of the world. Now, Bishop Lancaster, and when we're when we're saying that we're not of the world, so is it okay if a pastor decides to? Um, there was one instance in the in the uh, show where Dietrich Hatton had mentioned, uh, "I'll have a drink of wine." Was that okay for him to say? Well, Sister Rose, uh, I have to say what the Bible says on that. And the Bible says that a little wine is okay to drink for stomach's sake. But we also have to stay within the parameters of the context and the time frame in which that was written. Because at that time, the type of meditations that we had available to us now were not available then. Okay. Uh, there is another scripture that says that wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. So it suggests to us that wine can trick you. Okay. And so anything that throws us off balance may not be healthy for us. Uh, personally, I don't drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there again, the scripture says, who are we to judge another man's servant? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's just, personally for me, I choose not to. You choose not to. Right. Do you know other pastors that may have partake, Reverend Stanley? No. 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 Okay. And if they decide to do so, like uh, Dietrich Hatton, is it okay, do you think? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, personally for me, I wouldn't say it's okay. We hold, uh, we hold it held to a standard, and much is given, much is required for us. Mm-hmm. We, we have to lead people um, to, to holiness. We have to lead people to at all times be in position to not allow the enemy to gain condemnation in our lives. There may be a chance that we're um, out and we've had drinks or out drinking and, and the call takes place. We, 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 we can't turn it off. As Pastor Robinson said, uh, we have different lives. We have a home life. We have a church life, but at all times we're held to a standard of holiness. Mm-hmm. Uh, we never know when you're going to need to pray. We never know when we're going to need to talk to God on our behalf, on behalf of someone else. And I wouldn't want, um, to be impeded by alcohol or drugs or any kind of that nature. So again, it's my personal choice not to drink. Um, just for a standard of holiness. Mm, wow. And let's talk about one of the main, one of the biggest issues of the show, which was brought up, is shacking. 
I tell you, it lit up. It took the Twitter and the Twitter sphere, okay? So um, it was just like people were like, it's okay, it's not okay. Some preachers were saying it's not in the Bible. What is your take on it, Brother Robert? Second, uh, it's amazing, uh, it's amazing God to have a life and God's life and you know. Uh, you know, why is it that uh, he can't marry the one that is? So Paul, like he said, uh, I wish you could be as high as not as good to marry than to marry. Mm. That's, That's what the word says. <laughs> now, now, Dietrich Haddon keeps reminding us that it's not in the Bible. What do you say about that, Pastor Man? Yeah. Well, it may not be in the Bible in those particular words, right. but as right. Pastor Robinson just stated, First Corinthians chapter seven, the Apostle Paul makes it clear that if you broke it down in a simple term Bible, it would strictly tell you that shacking is forbidden. Mm -hmm. A man is to have a wife. It does not say that he's to have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. but a wife and. If, if if he cannot contain himself, it's better that he's married. Yeah, it's a burn. Yeah, it's a burn. It's a burn. Well, I, I, it's all, you know, thinking about it, what is shacking? What, what is, is shacking? shacking? The definition, what would we call shacking? If, what, what's worse to, what's worse? I think it's, it's, it's wrong um, for a man and a woman to live together as they're married, as you said, and not married. Mm -hmm. um, live together to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Um, you know, we can't make provisions for the lust of the flesh um, in any kind of way. And shacking, that only gives that opportunity that we cohabitate. We, as, as we've heard jokingly, we test the car before we drive it mm -hmm. um, and all that kind of, kind of stuff. Um, that's not, that, that wouldn't be um, wise. You can't right. put fire under your bosom and not be burned. Mm -hmm. um, you can't put yourself in positions um, to be tempted and not fall into that temptation mm -hmm. in such instances as um, living together or shacking. And really, who, who, who wants to keep riding in a used car, too? Okay. You know what I'm saying? You get my drill. <laughs> New tag. What you just call it? What you just call it? Instead of buying the car, you get the milk free. Uh-huh. You got a lot of people, and I think the one of them has to be kind of sort of, um, uh, I'm not going to say crazy, but uh, uh, let's say crazy. Well, well, okay, let's say crazy. Then, <laughs> so you be with a man for so long, and then you know you, you're not married. Mm -hmm. You're not married, but you won't have the benefit like you're married. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and I would like to say, you know that, you know the Bible says, "Be not conformed to this world, okay. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind." Mm -hmm. And I think that what has happened is that tradition has taught us to endorse stuff that is not scripture. Wow. And when you don't mm. know scripture, you will automatically assume that what you have endorsed is right, mm -hmm. is right. right. And so we have such things as common law married and things such as that, but if you don't have the license, mm. you're not married. Right. Wow. Right. You know. Mm. There was it. So shacking is off limits, as we say here. Shacking is off limits. Mm -hmm. So he got it totally wrong Definitely and so. putting it out there wrong. Exactly. Really making it seem like that it is okay. You know, because he kept saying he wants his family home. He wants his family home and he wants them. But they started off, okay, they got the baby first. So does that make it right that you should now cohabitate? No. No. Uh -uh. As um, at the little hat show, the lady said, that's, that's, that's fornication. Right. Yeah, that, that, that you can't you can't cover one wrong with trying to make it almost right. You right. can't use a wrong. He can't use that he had a baby by her, and now since we've already um, act like we're married, let's mm -hmm. go continue to act like we're married even more and live together. That still doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. there, there's a, as Bishop said, there's a standard that God gives us in His Word that we must hold to mm -hmm. um, if we're going to be called His, if we're mm -hmm. going to be used by Him. To glorify Him, there's no way. I don't care um, what type of, of, of stage we, we gain. This show can be worldwide. This show can be um, universal. It doesn't matter if we're not living the standards that God has prescribed in His Word. Then it won't give Him glory in us. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. And, 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 and also, to add to what my my colleague said, you know, I think that one of the things that so often has happened is one of the most dangerous things I see happening today 
uh, based on my understanding of scripture, is that a lot of people who are in leadership have been misleading people. Wow. Yeah. So we are telling people that things are okay that are not okay. Mm -hmm. And so now for the modern day preacher who is coming on the scene, who is teaching and preaching what the unadulterated word of God says, now what we're running into is what tradition has taught, and now you have this battle of tradition versus truth. Yeah. Mm. And so when tradition comes into conflict with truth, you have more traditionalists yeah. who than you have people who know the truth. Wow. And but I'm sorry, go ahead, Pastor. It's amazing to me how we're getting um, involved in issues that, that matter with salvation. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. salvation, once you give your life to Christ, there's some things you just have to quit. There's some things, that if they don't fall off, you have to study God's word mm -hmm. to allow yourself to be strengthened against them. We're not even talking about the mission and ministry that, that Brother Rob is doing, going into the crack house, going get hair run. See, if you can't worry about if my girlfriend at home is not drunk, you know, or with the drinking and the shacking, how can I do mission and ministry what Christ called us to do? Wow. You're not, you're not worried about it. You're trying to see uh, what somebody else wants, so we have that to talk about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're trying to talk about what God wants us to do. Popular instead yeah, of powers. I heard something mm -hmm. that that's it. That's uh, about last because I heard something I said the other day about this one the cause and the how that the uh, people are living. Yeah, we're going to get on that. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. so another one is like, but what about going out there for different gifts? Gifts. We went into the crack house and got a sister. I didn't notice that when the uh when the girl girl came to the restaurant, I was he was ready ready to get him because look, they said when my sister had enough mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. like so you know, you can't realize that you have to have enough. Mm -hmm. uh, uh that's uh that's uh what he did whatever like that I I I called him because I said, Well he did want to shack his phone uh uh the phone right now. He did want to do that. And then like I said before, that's right by him being a pastor. How are we going to tell earlier if, if we share it? How can we prove against that? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Let's go to Man Cave. Man Cave was really interesting yeah. Yeah. Um, to me. And it brought up an issue that I think that a lot of people kind of talk about in the church, but never kind of voice their opinion to, about their pastor. And one thing was about the entourage. We see a lot of pastors who are up and coming, and they feel like they have to have a group of people with them. What do you think about that? Do you think that they should travel with an entourage or, or just come along with them and God? I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful blessing. I've been with them for a lot of time because uh, I've been my first 14 years. I've been in my 14th year. I've been with them. Congratulations. Uh, uh, that mm -hmm. year, uh, Thanksgiving. Well, there's one man that uh, came back to my church, and uh, he has my deacon here, so I'm not happy to get you on the bar. And this young man, the guy that is a pastor, the Lord, to my spirit, and I want to serve you. Wow. And I believe that that's a difference between an uncle and someone who wants to serve you. Mm. I think that, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if you got God in you, mm -hmm. and you got grace and mercy on one side, God will take care of them. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference because when you look at the culture, they all of us are going to sit. That's how we are. Something I said, I know all of you are black people that travel our own and realize you are not going to sit. That's mm -hmm. how we are because there are some pastors that you want to talk to, you have an appointment, and you have to sit there and uh, uh, I'll be saying it's close to our pastor. Now I thank God for what you do. Because if you really trust and if you serve, uh, God will be the one who is He'll protect them. He'll protect them. He'll protect them. Mm -hmm. I saw a sick one. I just saw the meat commission of Tender call in his security service. And he got death threats. And I don't know how the person was able to get so to him. Correct. But I believe that you are God. God is the person in the Bible says, no weapon. No weapon. No mm -hmm. one against that. You shall talk. That's what he said. So, you know, entourage, I don't, I don't, I want to say entourage, but. Even Jesus had his disciples, but then yet when he would go on the mountain, Peter, James, and John would go with him. There were mm -hmm. times that he had he had his close uh, connection with those that were close with him. I think mm -hmm. that it'll automatically um, build itself. You don't have mm -hmm. to go out and hire the biggest, the toughest guy. But you know, there there are times that that is needed in today's world. Mm -hmm. with what we live in, you might you need protection. You don't mm -hmm. know um, where you are, what type of people, where you're going um, while you're there. Ministering the word of God, there are times that, that, that you can be, we can be in a small local church and you'll yet need someone there to assist you. So it's not as much as being there 
as being a group of people, but whatever that job is that, that they needed to do, um, the entourage, if the entourage presents itself there, then um, I think I feel it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I definitely am in 100% approval of it. If you search the scriptures, you'll see where King Saul had an armor bearer. Mm-hmm. And that armor bearer understood the importance of protecting and serving that man of God. Mm-hmm. So much so that when Saul died, the armor bearer took his sword and fell on it because when his servant fell, his life was done as well. And I think that a lot of times people are so busy looking at the preacher and those whom God has has functioned in their spirit to serve that man of God. I think they look at it and think that the preacher thinks he's something. But the preacher does not put the unction on people to serve God does. Mm-hmm. The preacher is just a good example of servanthood, mm-hmm. as Pastor Robinson said. And there is something about his service that causes other people to glean, as Ruth did, what is falling off of the man of God. Mm-hmm. And so we have to not look at that man of God and those serving him from a carnal perspective. Right, right. You have to be in the spirit realm exactly. to understand that this is heavenly order. Exactly. When, when Jesus uh, was in battle, Jesus told him, I could pray to my father yeah. and he'll send a legion of angels. They're waiting to serve me. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. a lot of times we force so much of ourselves out that once we're done preaching, people will walk up to us and want a conversation. We really don't have a conversation at that time. Mm-hmm. But if they've not been taught that, then they mean no harm, and because we are servants, we'll sit there and try to give assistance to them, even though we just poured out everything we have, mm-hmm. and we are drained. Mm-hmm. We are drained, and when we come out to preach, and when that preaching session is done, we need somebody to get us out of there, because if they don't, we'll keep serving. Yeah. Right. We, we're built that way. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's one of the things that people don't understand. And then, Sister Rawls, I think one of the major dilemmas of that or one of the major reasons for that is because people just will not get in their word to understand kingdom order. That's it. Kingdom I, order. I, 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 heard a, I heard a sermon that was preached. Um, Jesus was there and the disciples asked, um, Lord, the people are crying after us. <laughs> and, and Jesus would ask them, um, you know, what do you have? Mm-hmm. And the disciples had nothing. You know, it's it's not serve us, it's service. Like you said, we I think so many people have gained. Um, they they flock behind people to get their name out there to draw to be on the platform to be on the stage. They think that it's serve us now. The people are crying for us instead of crying. They were crying for Jesus. Then Jesus said, "What do you have?" They had nothing, but there was a boy in the crowd yeah. with, with two fish and five loaves. You mm-hmm. preach it down. And, and, and they became the middle man for the little man, mm-hmm. they, the, as the preacher stated. And, and they then they had to take the boys' lunch and pass it out, but they had nothing. Mm-hmm. But, and, but they were serving. They were serving. Mm-hmm. He had them carrying out the work, um, although he had the anointing of God that were mm-hmm. breaking, stretched the break. Mm-hmm. So what do you want to do? They can feel on those. That's, what, that's, what, that's all we are. It's service. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's all that, that, that's all we are nothing but service. Uh uh-uh. but it, 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 we don't Jesus himself came and said, I didn't come to be a servant, mm-hmm. but I came to serve. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And a lot of times like Pastor Andrew said, we want people uh, to serve us. But number one is but with him I would put it this way, to serve mm-hmm. this plan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 My calling mm-hmm. to a full fear as an air I will walk in the calling. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but if a lot of folks don't know that calling. They don't know their call. But they get mad for bishop, pastor, mm-hmm. ourselves, because we do doing our call. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But what do we want? Everybody in church will know their call and their faith. They know what they're supposed to be or whatever like that. Sir, that's how what we are. Mm-hmm. Sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think, too, this is the wrong thing. You know, another issue that we run into in the church, especially, especially in the church, is that you have people who will go to the secular jobs and do everything they're asked to do. Mm-hmm. But when we get to the church, and in spite of the office that we hold, and in spite of this amount of respect that they say they have, when certain things are requested, you discover that the call does not match the wall. Right. Woo. And so, mm. and so it, it just dumbfounds me that you can be more obedient in the secular world mm-hmm. than you can in God's house. In God's house. And it all goes down to perfect segue, the dollar. <laughs> the dollar. Perfect segue, because that's my next one. Right? The dollar. 
And one thing that was brought up, you know, that caused such a heated discussion within the man cave was about the honorarium, uh, the request of an honorarium or a budget that a uh, pastor has to ask another church, is it in your budget to be able to afford me? Or how do you all think a pastor or how do you all handle situations? Do you ask request for an honorarium or you just take whatever they give you? There were times in, in, in the scripture when Paul, he would go, I, I want to say to Ephesus, he told them ahead of time, when I get there, have my, my money ready. He would have the honorarium ready because it was for mission and ministry. Mm -hmm. We've taken the mindset to want to have so much access to the pastor and to the preacher's private life that we want to control what's given and what he's being, what he's asking of. We, we even ask, you know, um, um, you know, want to know all the financial details of his life, but yet when it comes to mission and ministry, we hold back on that. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the whole problem when it comes to this honorarium talk. Um, a workman is due his high. Mm -hmm. um, um, spare, you know, we, we, we shouldn't, we shouldn't um, try to control people by money when it comes to mission and ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, you just said it. God will take care of it. God, God will do it. And, but, but if we can't, if we can't control them um, by force, then we try to control them um, by finances. Mm -hmm. So is it okay to request what you want or just let the church give you what they think that they can afford to give you? Well, for me, uh, well, Pastor Tony, do you want to answer? That, that, that's a, what the, it, it baffles me what the church can afford. What can, what the church can afford. You know, that, that's not, right. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. know, and, 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 and also, when you talk about what the church can afford, that leads back to whether or not the people who want to control the church are doing their part in the church. Mm -hmm. I believe that the church is structured to such a degree that God functions people to come to the church. And once people say they belong to Christ, then we have to understand that it is our job as kingdom citizens to render unto Caesar that that is Caesar's, mm -hmm. and unto God that that is God. And if I do my part and all of my members do their part, then there will always be enough meat in God's house. Mm -hmm. And so when I invite Pastor Robinson or when I invite Pastor Stanley, we really don't have to have the discussion of finances because I understand that the hardworking farmer is worthy, worthy to be the first partaker of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And so I would never try to starve him because I understand from the rich that to bless him brings a blessing on me and on my people. Mm -hmm. And so there is a there yeah. is a prerequisite that we have to understand when it comes to finances, which means which simply says Whoever honors him, he oh, will man. honor. Yeah. And so when I treat Pastor Stanley right, Pastor Robinson right, I don't have to worry about being in lack because God's going to always honor his word because it can't come back void. Mm -hmm. And right. if I have God's heart, treating you right is going to be easy. Yeah. Wow. Two, two seconds. Uh, when you said structure, but we, we now we've made our own structure. Our structures are man-made instead of um, the principles in which God ordained. Um, God would... Um, Every church, was, the tabernacles and, and the churches, they were built on free will offerings, not the tithe. Mm -hmm. The tithe was used to pay the Levites, to pay the priests, to pay those workers, the, the, the men and the women of God that were there. But now we've reversed it. We build the churches with the tithe, and we take offerings up to give to the preacher. When it's reversed, and it wasn't done that way in Scripture, when even Moses had to tell the people, stop bringing the offering, because they were bringing so much when it was coming to building um, the temple of God. So, again, if we structure ourselves right and believe in godly principles, then there'll be more than enough, and we won't have to worry and try to um, squeeze each other. Wow. So, Pastor Robinson, a church on a dark road, they ain't got no gravel, barely standing up. They call you and say, we want you to come down here. And they said, but we ain't got the twenty five dollars. What you gonna say? What do you say to them? I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to say it. I said, is it old? I said, it's old. I said, let's go back a minute. That's mm -hmm. for the old and old. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I said, the future uh, has to move and go. Mm -hmm. They saw how to walk. But they didn't have a whole lot of money, but they had money. How mm -hmm. did they pay the future? They paid the bill. And the pastor asked about this, and like I said, this is all true. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then I look at this thing, because if, if you can't afford 
you take care of the man of God. Look at the uh, relief, the revival is not abundance. Okay. Um, if you can't afford to pay the man of God, we don't need to have it. We don't need to have it. We don't need to have it. Uh -huh. The revival is not about the money. Uh -huh. It's about saving souls being revived. That's Correct. Uh -huh. And as you say, the gap of the time, I talk about me. That was time I've been in ministry, been preaching almost 30 years next year, 29 years this year. And that was time, you're right, I wouldn't preach unless the church was full. Okay. I wouldn't I would, I preach because I thought, as you said, that it was about me. Mm -hmm. But then I, I like, saw God had to be honest, not hell like out me. Mm -hmm. And to my senses. Uh -huh, that it wasn't about it, you. It, it wasn't about me. Mm -hmm. And then now, once I come to as you said earlier, Paul could look at that I was a child. Mm -hmm. I thought as a child. I understood, but mm -hmm. when I became a man, and you find out, it, it, I put a child in stand. Mm -hmm. It's not about the money. That's why, that's why we work, because if we did work, what would we have? Right. But the church had a responsibility mm -hmm. in taking care of the man of God. Mm. We have that, 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 that's in the Bible, that's in mm. Matthew, that's in Luke. We, they have a responsibility. Yeah. But instead of doing that, uh, uh, we, 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 we can't give them all that. We can't give all that. But when I look at blessing, yeah. run down. Mm -hmm. But if you bless your man or woman of God, God, that's an honor what he said by blessing you. But, mm -hmm. yeah, but now you try to curse me, you always get cursed. Wow. That, that, that's in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why number one is, I mean, these lifestyles, whether they're the pastor, I'm not, I don't give it nobody. That's the standard. Is it okay if they drive a, a Lexus or a Bugatti? I mean, I know they ain't got no time. time they time. might. I don't know. Jets and stuff. Change. Is so it okay? You can drive Lexus. You know, uh -huh. You're going to have good credit. That good. You know, it makes me feel good. What does it matter? I know. What I people say is, oh, oh my God. When I, when I see them, it don't matter to see. I'm not a hate. Uh, right. I, I, I'm, mm. I'm not a hate because one thing about it, when I live alive with my church, can I talk about me? Talk about my, you know, talk about my church. church. 14 years ago, I was driving my wife clothes. Mm -hmm. Four clothes. My mother said, Lord, the pastor showed me the car. Nobody said, let's go get one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said, let's go get one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so one time, so I got the first car left, and I still pretty good. Uh -huh. All right, well, we got the next one. Oh, we pay you too much money. My wife spoke, said, that's not his car, that's my car. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what I'm saying? But see, mm -hmm. look, my thing, the car don't make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I make the call. Okay, so my say thing, it. So my thing is, I don't care who gets there because if we left the night and went to Walmart, mm -hmm. if we all of us got to check out line, uh, that line might be out to the uh, out to the road, but if you stay in line, mm -hmm. sooner or later, you got to get checked out. Right. And, and that's pre support the idea. If I just keep trusting God, mm -hmm. I don't care who gets there before I get mine. Because mm -hmm. that's saying he did it for them. Mm -hmm. He can he do, do it for you. But see, we got to know that we got we got stop we got stop mm -hmm. And not only that, it's not only among the members, it's among the preachers. Really? Like it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's among the brothers. Oh, I'm mad with Pastor Stanico, he's running two or three hundred on Sunday morning. But you know what? Well, I got two or three hundred, twenty five or thirty. I'm still gonna preach like the church is full. Mm -hmm. Because he told me that all I gotta do is lift. Lift him. Mm -hmm. Lift him. Mm -hmm. Not you. Not lift, him. And lift him. That's right. He'll do the drum. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Wow. That's all about so it. is it okay if the preachers are, you know, if they if they're wealthy, they have a you know, a jet, they have their own private jet and everything, and then the, the members are just making ends meet. What do you think about that? Well, I believe that we have to also examine, Sister Lowe's, mm -hmm. whether or not the members are doing what the Bible says right. to do. Okay. Because now, do understand, and I think that one of the reasons so many people draw back from the church is because they think that because they paid their tithes for two or three months, that they're supposed to have what Pastor Stanley has now. Okay. But most of the time, people don't have a clue of how long it took for God to bless you yeah. like that. Yeah. Because God is not seeking for people who will look for his hand. Mm -hmm. He's seeking for people who will look for his heart. Yeah. And I think that one of the things that, that, that I may suffer so much from is that jealousy has crept into the church so much so that my eyes are so much on Pastor Stanley and and Pastor Robinson, that I've lost focus on God. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what we must understand about whether it is a jet or yacht or whatever, if that person's ministry, mm -hmm. which is a word you don't hear a lot of mm -hmm. in our churches, but if that person's ministry is expansive enough 
for him to need those kind of things, then God will not only give that man or woman of God vision, God is going to also give provisions for that person to fulfill that vision. Wow. So that they'll be there. And not only will God give him the jet, God will give him a pilot. Ah. <laughs> because the jet is no good without the pilot. And now I don't know uh, any pilots, but I believe if God gives me a jet, a pilot is coming from somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. You guys are preaching tonight. I, I got just a few more questions and I'm going to let you all go. But there was one instance um, in the tea party. I had an email, somebody emailed me and asked me about the tea party in which they talked about how their husbands, or at that point uh, their boyfriend, one of them, um, had to deal with women always slipping the number or coming to the church just to kind of seek out the pastor because they feel like the pastor is so powerful. He's a man of power and he's almost like a rock star. So how do you all handle that? How, have you ever had to handle a situation in which women are just throwing themselves out of power? Don't get quiet on okay. me now. Well, I, would say, <laughs> I would say that, you know, there are some things that we cannot prevent. Right. But the very thing we cannot prevent, we don't have to entertain. Right. Okay. You know, and if someone walks up, because there are times that people will walk up and just plant a love seed in our hand. Mm -hmm. Well, when someone shakes your hand, you have no clue that they're fixing to put something in. Mm -hmm. And so when they put something in your hand, if it is a phone number, then you know who you are in Christ, and you know that that is not your MO. And so you don't have to be cold to the person, but you don't have to call the number either. Mm -hmm. And so to not call the number automatically indicates to the person that he does not entertain this kind of gesture. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, and, and, and it goes for different strokes. Okay. You know, it's different strokes for different folks. But for mm -hmm. me, uh, that's not my purpose for being wherever I am. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't need that number. If you want to get in touch with me, then I have a structure established in the church that you have to go through so that this meeting will be to some degree uh, oversighted by some other people. It won't just be go. us meeting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The game, but, but again, you know, the, the rules um, change, but, but it's still the same. You, you, you can discern. You know when people mm -hmm. are coming to you. You know, um, you know friendly approaches. You know Flirtatious approaches. So you have to govern yourself in holiness at all times. Being preachers under, under the anointing of God, um, you can't um, go in a church scared of the whore. You can't go in there thinking, I'm, I'm afraid that I'm a fornicator or, or any of that stuff. You have to walk in the power of God. And when those spirits approach you, just like the murderer, just like mm -hmm. anything else, you see it coming. Mm -hmm. And you have to walk, you have to put buffers up. It doesn't, um, it's so many people now trying to, Prove that they're not scared mm -hmm. instead of proving that they're powerful of God, entertaining sin and, and entertaining different women and different vices that come your way, proving that you can handle it. And then at the end, you utterly fail, and then you need everybody else to come put the pieces back together. If you see it coming, you just have to avoid it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Sister Rose, when Pastor Sandra was talking, uh, the, the, the story about the harlot, Mary Magdalene, who came in mm -hmm. and, and Jesus was sitting at the table. And Jesus knew what he she knew what she was. He wasn't shocked because she came. The people around the table were shocked. Right. But look at how Jesus dealt with it. This woman unwrapped her hair, bowed down at his feet, and begin and bust open a box of alabaster oil, poured it on Jesus' feet, which would totally tear up a restaurant in our day and time if it okay. happened. Because we go with that woman now, you know. But this woman goes through <laughs> all of these things that don't look right, and Jesus is not moved by that like they were moved. Mm -hmm. Jesus understood her motives for doing it, and he turns to Peter and says, Simon, if a man owed two people, and the one whom he owed the most forgave him, and the other did too, who would he love the most? He said, the one that forgave him the most. He said, this woman. And so there will be people who, as Pastor Stanley said, are whores or live whorish lives or ungodly lives because they see God in us. Mm -hmm. They will walk by everybody at the table and come to us, not to serve us. The rock star. That's right. That's right. That's right. right. But they're looking for that, 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 that stability that they see in us 
hoping that that same God that got us to this point can help them. And we have to be discerning enough mm -hmm. to try that spirit by the spirit and know how to address those around the table, haters as you call them, mm -hmm. so that when we look on her, we don't look at her like they do. Yeah. Mm. And, and it would help us that, that if we're in a restaurant, that we don't partake of, of spirits, that we can be in these spirits. <laughs> okay, 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 I got you, I got you. Um, I mean, just don't have that cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about Bishop Noel Jones. Now, he's living a kind of, he's a single man. And he just, you know, he has his friend for 16 years, Loretta. And how do you how, how do you see him as a as a bishop? How do you see him? Is it okay for him to just have this friend of fifteen years and he just feel like you know it's never ending, it's not going anywhere? But you know what? I appreciate his honesty of being very clear with her. But however, how does it look? And, uh, once again, he clarified that friends. Mm -hmm. Now maybe church folk, quote unquote, going to take it. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. or whatever, but long as he knows and, and, and uh, she knows, have an understand, really that's all that matters. Because first of all, I look at uh, my situation or whatever, my, my, my wife don't pass. Right. It's me. Mm -hmm. So therefore, well, number one, if my wife and I divorce today, or whatever, like I said, so it, 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 it friends. Mm -hmm. And so many times people think that pastors, preachers, can have mm -hmm. female Mm -hmm. You can't have me like said you can't have it. You got to do something wrong. But that, that, that's your thing. Okay. That, that's your thing. But long as we know what we say, really at the close of the day, how my friendship with her can be you. All right. And what is your take on it, Pastor Stanley? I'll be the same. Um, I, we have to take it as Bishop Noel Jones gives us. They're friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to allow him that space. We have to allow him that opportunity to, to have a friend. We don't know what type of hurt. Um, that he was involved in losing his first wife. Mm -hmm. He was married over 20 years and then losing that wife. Over 20 years, it might take 20 more years for the stain to move, for the hurt to move, in order for him to be able to trust another woman, for to, to allow her in. Um, God gave us, us, us our, our spouses to be on the inside, not to be on our side as that diamond piece, that first lady with the big hat mm -hmm. and the big dress, and that's all the church sees. That's all the but, church. But, but men, God saw Adam was alone and he needed a woman inside. He reached mm -hmm. inside him to put something inside him what he needed. Mm -hmm. And if she's everything for the outside and not the inside, maybe Bishop Jones is just waiting to see how she fits in his heart mm -hmm. and not on the pew. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think this first lady stuff, we had to blow this out of the porch. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Now we're, we're, you're we're, on the first lady stuff? Well, uh, yeah, I'm on, we have blown this out of the porch. Why? How many, how many songs do they preach? How many times do they get up during the night going to see a sick or somebody die? Okay. But on the anniversaries, yeah, they go, they, oh, they, want, they, they, want, they want more clout than their die. It's why, their day. Why, uh, how many songs have you preached? Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. why, why should it be your day? It, it shouldn't be that. <laughs> so let, let, let's get into that okay. because that's, that's a big issue yeah, it is. Uh, in our churches, in it our is. culture, yeah, it is. that right. when it's the pastor's anniversary, mm -hmm. they're looking for the mm -hmm. family mm -hmm. or you and your wife. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that and there's nothing wrong with the wife saying, and that's wrong. I mean, that, and that's wrong. That, 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 that's wrong with but that. it's but, your day. But but but, but it's, it's your it, it's your day. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because, like you said, the Bible says, "Man find a wife, they find a good thing." But I go back now before you be a wife in the church, mm -hmm. you got to have your wife at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Proverbs uh, thirty-one right. was critical. It said that that her husband. Trust. Trust and says she's blessed. It said it twice. You know, it, it, she she's a worker at home. She she's a provider at home. She makes sure that her home is lacking. And with a mouth, she can tear her home down. But with a hand, she can build it up. But wow. you know, but but we we switch it around and we allow everybody and anybody into our private lives, into our homes, through access, um, through whether it be our, our marriage or how we present ourselves as a family at the church and it does us damage because you don't know how to draw the line. Mm -hmm. I've, seen, I've seen a lot of first ladies, they have more power than the pastor mm -hmm. because they have their little clique, their little uncle Raw, they're, they're all about going to be there. But they, what, what a man of God, where mm -hmm. he? So, so your pastor's anniversary is coming up, you mm -hmm. just mentioned, mm -hmm. and your wife, Teresa. Mm -hmm. And so when, when you all have your pastor's anniversary, when your anniversary, mm -hmm. she sits beside you. Now when, it get, when you get home mm -hmm. and if she's not recognized, 
Mm-hmm. And what's the? I mean, my thing is, yeah, she's going to be recognized. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I have a problem with that. But when it comes out to the mall, why should she have anything to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 I mean, oh I mean, come on, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean honestly, you just blow me away. I mean, no, I mean, I mean, because first of all. It's got to be a stopping point somewhere. Uh-huh. It, it, so it you think to, the woman I mean, she she I mean, shouldn't have anything? I mean, I mean, come on, April. I mean, let's let's look at it. I mean, we we we've been around a long, long time, and like you have know, been mean, the pastor's anniversary. And, you know, they want to make sure first lady, you all right? But what, what about what about the pastor? Uh-huh. You know, nobody cares about him. What what about him? What about he's the one that free, as you say, hold himself out? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, first lady, they get mad with the hood like this. Like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they're, they're on a good Sunday, oh, preach back. Come on now, really? Uh-huh. Let's be honest. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, let's, let's be honest about it. You know, let's, let's be honest. But like I said before, I mean, well, once again, you want to recognize her for what? But that pastor, that pastor, God called him. Like, we don't want to be a help me. Mm-hmm. Now, I agree with Pastor Ed, like I said before, God made the woman from the inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, inside, but she she can she can tear you up or build you up or, 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 or build you up. Mm-hmm. That's what I look at. So, like when you go to a pastor's anniversary and the wife is getting like more accolades and they're just, well, we love her, we love her, and then he's just sitting there. What what's your thought? What, what is going through your head at that moment? Oh no! You know, they want to sit there, you know, they want to talk about it, they want to be like, but the Pope pastor, you know, he I mean, he just, I mean, he just really, you know, somebody needs to say something. Somebody but, needs to say yeah, something. Somebody needs but to it say. don't need to be the first lady. I, I, don't, I, don't, think, I don't think, Sister Walsh, mm-hmm. I don't think that what Pastor Robinson is saying is that they don't need to say anything. Right. But I think what Pastor Robinson is saying, and I totally agree uh, with what he's saying, uh, if this is what he's saying, and that is that if the pastor is the pastor, Mm-hmm. And something that I teach at Living by Faith is this. God holds you accountable to make sure I'm taken care of. Okay. I don't need Living by Faith to take care of my wife. That's my job. Yeah, okay. You understand? Yeah. Because if I start letting you take care of my wife, my wife will have more respect for you than she will for me. Right. Mm. And so all things must be done decent and in order. And, in order. 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 and so since my wife is not my head, Oh. Then if you're going to address my wife, address my wife through me. That's right. That's right. That is order. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. You know, you, you know that, 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 that God made the man to be the head of the woman. Mm-hmm. And the head of that man is Christ. Yeah, right. And Christ's head is God. And so when we break that process of order, you're automatically creating an issue. Wow. And so a lot of times people will attempt to step over that that process of order mm-hmm. and then you got a problem yeah. mm-hmm. but 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 one other thing i wanted to mention y'all mentioned uh bishop noel jones and him having his friend of 16 years if i can if i can yes address absolutely that. Mm-hmm. the bible says that as that a man that had friends mm-hmm. must first show himself friendly why does the bible endorse friendship and give us the process of having friends but the church can have a problem with the friend. Mm-hmm. But now, if the members of Living by Faith, and I say Living by Faith because that's where I pastor, mm-hmm. but if my members can be friends with whoever they choose, why should they have a right to pick who I can be friends with? All right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the bottom line is, is two things you can't pick for me. You can't pick a wife for me, and you can't pick my friend. I have that. I have that choice. Mm-hmm. That's freedom of choice, and it's my choice. And you don't have to like my friends, mm-hmm. and I don't have to like yours. And when I say like, I mean your friends don't have to be my friends. Mm-hmm. And we have to respect each other's choice enough to respect the fact that you may not agree with my friends, and I may not agree with yours. But we shouldn't have to stop being friends because of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's right. It shouldn't be that way. There's a lot of churches right now, Adrian, that the pastor don't have a wife, quote so unquote. Mm-hmm. You know, they won't even look at it. Mm-hmm. They won't even look at it at all, mm-hmm. period. Uh, 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 well, like I said before, but, but it, does that make it right? Mm-hmm. Does, does that make it right? No, it doesn't. It does not make it right. 
You know, but my first church, I was 18 when I passed my first church. And I was even playing by the man at 18. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, hey, you, I'm just still a child. I was still young. Mm -hmm. But like, but yeah, you made a lot of food. I made a lot of food mistakes. And I told Bishop and Pastor Stan tonight, I bet y'all food. Mm -hmm. But I refuse to be old too. Okay. I refuse to okay. because, like I say, we are still. I mean, I, I feel like uh, every generation is going to be a little weaker mm -hmm. and a little wiser. So mm -hmm. I believe, like now, and yes, I, I, I'm wiser now. Mm -hmm. Very much wiser. But yes, I mean, some of the same mistakes that you made before, you know, you, you will make it that. But you got to have some courage on this side. Mm -hmm. You got to have some. You can't go through the world by yourself. Mm -hmm. And then take through, and if churches didn't have women in it, it had been unfair a long time ago. Mm. So every time a, a new woman comes to church, it got to be Pastor Mark. Uh -uh. Oh, yeah. It got to be there. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Well, Pastor Stanley, tell us what's your take on it. You, you're a recently single man to, uh, as a pastor. You're still pastoring a church. Tell us, how has that transition been for you personally? Hmm. Hmm. Um, Pastoring the church, it, it didn't change. It didn't change. There was a, on the personal side, it was rough. It mm -hmm. was rough. There's a hole um, that that divorce leaves in you that that that's pitiful, that that's bitter. Um, you go through many emotions, but I we have to stay in tune with God, and I think that's the that's the only thing that kept me sane, that mm -hmm. kept me um, afloat. Was the relationship that I had with God able to to count on God to be there? There were times that 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 certain days will have moments. Of light spots, of bright spots, and then I was sharing with the members um, on Wednesday night. It, isn't it amazing now how certain days have maybe certain weeks might have bad spots? Mm -hmm. How God, when you look back, you can really appreciate God for how He led um, led me through um, being able to go through that. But being single, you, the same buffers are there. It's this holiness, you, you can't. My relationship with God. Um, it's so pivotal. I share it with um, my kids all the time. I feel that I'm at a point where now I'm so close to God that I have to be um, meticulous in everything and anything that I do to make sure that it, it's what God will want me to do. Mm. Um, it's critical. You, you, you make mistakes. You make mistakes. And then if you go out, if I feel like now I'm just free, really, I can go out there, I'm free, I can find anybody and everybody, you'll make a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll bind yourself again and you'll find yourself going through all types of bitterness at home as well as in the church. But God, um, there's no freedom. There's no, no, no limelight, um, mm -hmm. being, being out there. I'm um, being, um, they, you still have to be meticulous in making your choices, um, to allow people to come into your life. But God is gracious. God is He's gracious. gracious. He's gracious. God is gracious. He's gracious. Oh, He's gracious. Uh, I think a lot of times people think when they fail to get that pastor, we are here. Your people, human beings. That well, that uh, that they forget that that we are human, that we do make mistakes. But even when the uh, prayer make an error on a uh, baseball team, the coach don't pick them off. Mm -hmm. Even if LeBron James could have had a bad night, mm -hmm. the coach could have bench him or whatever, or then take him aside and talk to him. You got to realize the preacher is God's man. Mm -hmm. He chests out of him. Wow, not the, not, the, not man, not, not, not the coach. Mm -mm. If you go out and make mistakes or whatever it comes to, that was a whole year went by in my ministry. I've been changing. Mm -hmm. Couldn't do it, couldn't preach, couldn't buy a sermon, couldn't do anything. But then if we mess up, we have to go back to the Lord and be like what David said, create in me mm -hmm. a clean mm -hmm. heart mm -hmm. and renew the right spirit mm -hmm. within me. Mm -hmm. And I'll try, I thank you for a lot of time. You, you said it really nice. Then if, you, if a brother do all the Bible, if a brother do all the Bible, you which are spiritual, mm -hmm. it's so such a one in the spirit of meekness, mm -hmm. unless thou be tempted. Mm -hmm. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when, they, when we do go out here, the other scripture coming out of it, because they caught the woman in a dump. Mm -hmm. The Bible said they caught this woman in the bed. What you gonna do about it? If you look up what what let you without sin mm -hmm. chance the first stone. And you can imagine they didn't have these some chest folks. Yeah. Of course they had a stone already <laughs> caught, but you know, but Jesus when the Bible when you lift up his head, there was nobody standing. With him and the woman. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said, uh, what, what the Lord told uh, 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 go. I, I, I don't put the, uh, whatever, uh, and sin no more. You see mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. But therefore, if God 
can't forgive us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The thing I have, why we can't forgive one another, mm -hmm. whether you be a preacher, deacon, or whoever. Why, why, I understand what you said when we said earlier. We are here at a higher standard. I understand mm -hmm. that. But you know what? That is some preachers at the top. They fail too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But thank God, second, third, fourth chances. By yeah. grace. <laughs> That's great. It. That's it. That's you the thing. It tastes great. Mm -hmm. And Sister Robinson was talking. What came to mind was the statement that God made to Jeremiah. And, you know, we talk about us being married to our physical mates. But I think what people fail to realize a lot of times is that we're married to Christ first. Mm -hmm. We're married to him first. Yeah. And the, the union is of such potency that he says to Jeremiah to remind us that I'm married to the backslide, wow. which, which suggests that even if we fall, mm -hmm. what God is saying is I'm not divorcing you. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because my connection to you is one it, it, which is irrevocable. Mm -hmm. I'm not changing my mind about you. Mm -hmm. I've made a decision about you. My mind will not change if you fall and when you fall. Count it all joy. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I've already fixed the script. Mm -hmm. So that I put get back up in you. Yeah. You can't stay down, but you cannot preach to people about getting up unless you fall. Wow. I remember one is in the house in the church, the hospital for the sick. That's what it is. And number one is you know the Bible said we yeah, we're gonna leave that position. Mm -hmm. So every Sunday that when we come in, we not go to the truth. There's somebody that, that, that needs to know that he's still in the forgiven gift. You need to know that. Just like I showed you the other night, my baby danced at Bethlehem on the dance team. I had a dance team at my church. That was young girl that got pregnant out of Whitlock. Mm -hmm. That was on my older member. Uh, they needed an older church, wanted her to come back and make an announcement. Sure, I have a problem with that. But when she gets the analogy, can I get to my nephew, Mr. Come back and say that? Did you say that? Say that? that? Mm -hmm. first, first of all, why would that's how the old church did things cool. back in the day that a young lady got pregnant out of Britain or whatever, and they made her come back to the church. But where was the man? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then, but one thing about I told her she had it, but how many of them away from it? The, the, uh, mm -hmm. show, show me a perfect church, I'll show you a perfect preacher. You won't find one. Mm -hmm. Won't find one. The, the, the Bible says that, that in the Old Testament, the priest who would offer sacrifices yeah. on a yearly basis, mm -hmm. once a year, mm -hmm. he had to first offer for his own sins. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? And then for the sins of the people, if he survived after offering his own, mm -hmm. which suggests that it does not give us a license to right, sin, but right. the Bible says that there is no good thing that dwells in our flesh. Mm -hmm. and, and we all have sinned and come short of God's righteousness. But if you have not sinned first, you call God a lie, mm -hmm. which makes you a lie. Mm -hmm. But if you have not ever sinned, you probably can't preach to me. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because I need somebody who can relate to me. Right who's not trying to act as if they're perfect mm -hmm. and all self-righteous and have never done anything so that if you're going to get my clap and my amen, I need to know where you messed up at too. You don't have to tell me what it was, <laughs> but just let me know you did mess up somewhere. But we got some brothers in that. That you know, number one is, so they might not let you and I call them because they know I call them. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. Mm -hmm. like, but the one thing about it, as you said before, you know, how can you relate how can you relate to somebody? Mm -hmm. how, how can you relate? Mm -hmm. But then, like I said, folks, but that 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 is good. Mm -hmm. But God, look at what we're doing now, because there's some people that well, I don't want to hear him. I, I know what he used to be. Okay, but if uh, somebody searched the same way, uh, there was one time I was in Walmart with a lady. I was asked her, "Could you go hear uh, 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 this preacher?" Oh no, I don't hear him. I know what he do. So you know, I know that. But I came back. You know, seriously, the same way you know what he does. Somebody know what you do. Mm -hmm. Somebody know, so know what you do. So my thing is, my thing, and I used to be like that. My mother did it on, on 17 years. That was a Sunday school teacher that we had. Mm -hmm. And on Saturday night, we knew what he would do. Mm -hmm. So we would go by and make fun of go to home. And, hey. and my mother said, first of all, number one is, you're home. Mm -hmm. So I used to have an attitude, how could he teach me? But I know he just said, first of all, you're not that man of God. Mm -hmm. said, if you can look beyond him mm -hmm. and see what God is saying through him, mm -hmm. every Sunday when we're not the pulpit, we ask God to move us out the way. Mm -hmm. Hide us behind the cross mm -hmm. that we may see him 
mm-hmm. and not us. Mm-hmm. And see, one thing about I do beyond that, you got to look beyond mm-hmm. what Robinson did, or maybe what Pastor uh, uh, Stanley did, or Pastor Bishop Matthew did. You got to look beyond that because the Bible said we was born in sin, shaped up in a niche. And Bishop just said it so plainly. Number one, if, if, if we say we have sin, we're lying. That's right. That's we're, right. Lying. We're, we're lying. Mm-hmm. And then number one is why do folks come every time? Because number one, if you all are sick, mm-hmm. I can't preach to my folks without preaching to me first. Right. Mm-hmm. First. And, and mm-hmm. that, that like is a two sword. That, 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 that is why the Bible refers to Jesus as our kinsman redeemer. Mm-hmm. Kinsman. Kinfolk. Related, okay. which suggests that he can relate to us. Mm-hmm. He can relate to us. The reason he was able to redeem us is because he walked in this stuff we walk in. Wow. And he walked up on Gethsemane's garden and said, The spirit is with. Mm-hmm. But but this stuff you put me in, mm-hmm. yeah, the flesh is weak. Wow. And so he, he, he revealed to us the secret. Of how to survive and be victorious even in the flesh. You got to stay in touch with God. That's you just right. said that, Pastor Stan. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, you lose it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? God will. Mm-hmm. God will. Mm-hmm. God will. Mm-hmm. God will. Mm-hmm. God will. 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 I'm weak. I'm weak. I, I, I'm weak. Mm-hmm. I don't care what we do to be weak. We all get weak. We all get weak. But, 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 but then you sit there after that. If I'm mad with April, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Okay, April, I got you. Boom! You're going to hit the ground. But one thing about God, He will never let you fall. Uh-uh. He, will he got you. Fall. He got you in order whether you're right, whether you're wrong. Mm-hmm. He got you. One thing about God, I heard Mess Oakley say this. Bob Oakley said one time, you know, he, he can go in the gun. Mm-hmm. Come back. Because see, one thing about it, we don't want to deal with those prostitutes. Mm-hmm. We don't want to deal with those drug addicts. But no. in my church, I tell you, we all are ex something. That's right. And see, but, 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 but one thing about it, he can take a prostitute and turn her to a missionary. Right. That's why I said, if there's a drunk coming to the church, don't push him out. That could be the law. No, the one thing about preaching will get you in the church, mm-hmm. but teaching will keep you. Mm. Yeah. They can yeah. come from the pole yeah. to the pool pit. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But it's going to well, take. You gotta, Go we, we have to receive the grace of God. got to receive You have to forgive yourself. Um, you have to view yourself to a certain extent in, in what people have said about you, but don't allow your past to dictate your future. God is the only one that when he reveals himself to you, um, he says, seek the kingdom and seek what he has for us, and he'll give us whatever we need. He'll wipe the stains away. We ask for forgiveness all the time. We ask for forgiveness all the time. And, and, but, but we don't ask after forgiveness. Cleanse me now. Mm-hmm. You know, clean. Lazarus come forth. Lazarus came forth. Beat death. But then grave clothes had to fall off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. grave clothes had to fall off. Mm-hmm. We need cleansing. Then we need strength to walk every day. And it, it comes through the relationship that God gives us. We tell God we give him our growth to list, but we have to read his word to allow him to talk to us. Mm-hmm. And studying, that's the point. That's mm-hmm. the point. We want, we want the... People want the preacher to tell them how to live, but they don't want to do what we say. Oh, because we look at our, they look at our past. But, but, but if you're going to leave it up to us, you know, to, to lead you to heaven, then, 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 isn't that a priceless gift? Mm-hmm. But priceless. they don't want to pay the preacher. Mm-hmm. 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 you know, we're going to preach to you. But we're not going to leave. No. No. We're going to preach to you. But Jesus said, he had cast out sin over and to the sea of forgetfulness, never to rise no more. Who are we to bring mm-hmm. each other? Mm-hmm. Well, I believe by God, by standing that if the blood was good enough to clean my sin, my sin, mm-hmm. then, my, yeah. then it ought to be good enough to clean yours as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And something that I've been teaching on uh, for about like, the last two months is out of the book of Galatians, trying to help God's people understand that you will never be righteous in your own soul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna have to have the grace of God to do this. Mm-hmm. And so, if you keep trying to do it through ritualism and routine, you're gonna stay in a rut. Mm-hmm. Because the only thing that will make you right with God is the grace that mm-hmm. comes through Christ. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nothing else is gonna work. You can do anything else, but on your best day, 
Mm. It still won't pass the test with God. Right. You're going to have to do it the way that God has laid it out through his son, Jesus Christ. That's right. That's the only way. Well, guys, I tell you, I done had a great time. We done preach, we done song, and, <laughs> and laugh. And I'm telling you, one thing I did learn, that first lady better sit down. <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> you're right. Well, I tell you, seriously, in all seriousness, I do appreciate you all coming on tonight. And it has enlightened us to see what you all have to truly go through as a pastor. I, it's a job that I certainly would not want. I tell you, because you have to deal with the church. You're trying to preach. You're trying to get the sermon together. You have to diffuse this click from that click. And I tell you, we my hand goes off to you all. And it has to be nobody but God who leads you all and keeps you going. I appreciate you all coming on tonight. That's so welcome. And y'all can come back anytime. Thank you. Yes, I'll bring that first lady. <laughs> Thank you so much. And we'll be back with you on next week on the April Ross Show at 8 o'clock. Make sure that you check out my Facebook page, April Ross Show, or email me. If you have any comments about the show, we are going to re-air the show. So I'll be uh, keep up with it on my Facebook page. Make sure you do that. Or you may email me at the April Ross Show at Yahoo.com.